So we'll start with completeness, please. You want to give an overview of the project? Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Bob Manley. I'm the Director of Public Works and I'll be managing the project uh, for the town. Uh, as noted, uh, this is a, uh, the second phase of a three-phase project of improvements on Scott Dyer Road. Uh, phase one included improvements to uh, the easterly section of Scott Dyer leading up to the center of town, including uh, full depth reconstruction of Hill Way. And uh, now uh, we are moving forward with uh, phase two. Uh, originally, we were going to have two phases of the project, but we had to uh, break it into two additional phases due to uh, cost implications. So phase two uh, project limits are Patricia Drive uh, leading westerly to uh, Sperling Avenue, uh, where we'll be doing a full depth uh, reconstruction of the road and extending, extending the sidewalk from its terminus at Cape Memory Care to Sperling Avenue. As part of our project, as noted, uh, uh, the town is requesting uh, a resource protection permit to fill up to approximately 1,200 uh, square feet of wetlands uh, to enable the project. Uh, so uh, that's sort of a brief overview. Uh, we're working with the firm of Sebago Technics, who's uh, doing the design and engineering on the project. Steve Harding is here. Steve is, uh, uh, works for Sebago. He's also our town engineer, as, as you well know. So. I'll pass it off to Steve, who will give you an overview of the improvements and uh, uh, the limits of work. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Um, just to reiterate uh, just the overall scope, uh, this is uh, a blow up of the uh, location from uh, Ocean House Road to Spurwink Avenue. Uh, as Bob mentioned, we did the uh, dashed red area as phase one last year, which was Hillway in the beginning of Scott Dyer Road down to Longfellow. And then uh, phase three, uh, excuse me, phase two would be the piece we're working on today, uh, which is for Patricia Drive to Spurwink. And then phase three in the middle uh, will be undertaken next year, hopefully. Uh, by doing this sequence this way, uh, phase two is definitely the, the poorer condition of the roadway. Plus the advantage of doing this project is uh, if we build a pedestrian sidewalk uh, from Spurwink to Patricia, then we can connect to the existing sidewalk that's in phase three so that would be a complete connectivity to the town center. So that's the big uh, benefit with this, this project. Um, just a quick, uh, this is a typical section of the roadway. Uh, two 11 foot travelways, we'll be adding two four feet, uh, four foot paved shoulders. Uh, on the right hand side, there's just a, it's shown as a curb. A lot of those sections won't have a curb and it'll, the water will just sheet flow off the roadway into the adjacent uh, land. On the left hand side, we're showing a, it's shown a grass esplanade. Uh, there'll be eight sections of the road, of this section of the road that will have it, uh, sections that won't have it as we go past uh, tighter areas and through the Willow Brook area. Um, then Starting on the east side of the road, pull this up a little bit. This is uh, where Patricia Drive um, intersection is on the left-hand side. Um, this is the, excuse me. Now this would be the eastern side of the, of the uh, project area. I think in the cover letter that these uh, directions were swapped. Uh, Cape, Memory, uh, uh, Cape Memory Care, which is also known as Woodlands, owns the property uh, to the east of Willowbrook. Willowbrook is where the two large culverts cross through there. Uh, we have a small wetland impact in that area as well. <coughs> Hitting anybody right in this area. And then as you recall, there's uh, some storm drain outfalls here. We've pushed these back from the uh, Willowbrook, so there's 50 feet or so uh, in between the outfall and the brook, uh, which will help um, it's all vegetated through that area. Um, as we go further to the west, um, on the other side of Willowbrook is the Whitakers, uh, Norman and Eleanor. Bob and I met with them, and I believe you have a packet uh, from them, or an email from them in your packet, I should say. Um, they had uh, some concerns with the project. We walked through it. There's a couple of trees near the driveway that we'll be taking out. They, uh, 
wanted to have us relocate some lilacs, which we certainly can do and have good success replanting those types of plants. Um, and they had a couple other um, items that they would like us to do, um, but in talking to them and uh, John Barrett, who's the facilities manager for the Woodlands, both the groups were uh, amenable to uh, you know, providing an easement for both the outfall and uh, the maintenance of the outlet of the 254 inch culverts. So we'll be pursuing those as, as we go through the project. On the, um, would be the north side, on the other side, um, we, we'll uh, be also talking to folks about some grading easements that we would need on this, this piece. Um, Steve. Sure. Before you go on. This phase contains everything on this slide all the way to the left? Yeah, yeah, it, it would start um, over here. Uh, it's a south is down. I mean, south is south is up, and north is down. turns you around. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, no. The yeah. east. <laughs> and so that's what threw me off at first. I said, what? Yeah, and it continues to make, I've got a note here. I keep looking back to make sure I'm pointing, uh, yeah. to send you in the right directions. But you can see the north arrow is pointing down. So everything on, on the upper side of the roadway is south. And it would start at Patricia Drive. There's a, a dashed line. Oh, I see. Okay. Phase two. Battery's dying on this. Sorry. There's a dashed line on the uh, left-hand side that would um, indicate where it starts. <coughs> and then this is the, be the westerly section. Sorry about that. Um, this is the, the Wesley section, and it would begin, this, this portion of the road begins at Village Lane, and uh, there's a small wetland pocket on the upper side, on the south side, um, just to the west of, uh, or the right-hand side of uh, Village Lane. There's a small pocket of the wetlands that's off-site. We won't be impacting that area. And then as you see, as we go, and we'll have to widen this section of the road, there's a pocket of wetlands there that's 148 square feet, thereabouts, on the fill slope on the uh, north side of the roadway. And then there's another uh, length of wetland that uh, continues towards uh, the Spur Week Avenue and across from Starboard Drive. That's uh, 996 square feet. So we're a little bit shy of 1,200 square feet of wetland impact total, in total. And then the roadway would connect here at. Uh, at Spurwink Avenue, right at the Wainwright Drive intersection. So that's a, a brief overview. Um, we, as I mentioned, we have been talking to the folks, so we do realize we need to get some easements before we can start construction. Also got a copy of Todd Gammon from Blaze Engineers review letter. He had brought up a couple of comments. Uh, he wanted us to label the level spreader length, which would be 16 feet. So that's no problem. He also suggested that there should be a note that the contractor doesn't disturb any uh, area um, between the outfall of our culverts in Willowbrook, which we would certainly add that note. It's a good note to have. Uh, he noted the easements that we needed, and we also need to uh, go to the DEP and the Army Corps to get some permits as well for the wetland impacts. So that's the overview. Certainly, Bob and I can answer any questions you might have. All right, thank you. Okay, um, uh, I'm just gonna be official, <laughs> even though there's nobody here. Um, I'm gonna open, open it to public hearing on completeness of the submission and uh, count to five and close it because there's no one here to speak on that. Um, and now I'll open it to the board for questions regarding completeness of the submission or a motion, whichever. Go ahead. Steve, could you just walk us through the, um, on the south side of, on the Willowbrook uh, culvert, yep. uh, the, the, you had some slope work and I, I had a little trouble reading the, uh, the plan. Could you just describe what's going to be done there? Right here, um, I'm going to 
try this. Sorry, the battery's dead. Um, the, uh, the area right here, there's a storm drain outfall that's coming down from the hill. That uh, area that's uh, shown at the end of SD6, that's a riprap apron area, which will be a level spreader, only 16 feet wide, so the water would uh, discharge there go into a trough that would dissipate the energy and then spread out over the stone, the, the level spreader, dissipate a ship and sheet flow into the uh, Willowbrook. Likewise, on the other side of Willowbrook, which is the east side, I believe, um, there would be another outfall that would be two uh, catch basins down here at the low point of the, of the uh, Scott Dyer Road in that area. That, again, would discharge out through these uh, a level spreader. And that would be, again, 16 feet wide. Uh, and it's about 50 feet for both of these outfalls into the, uh, into the Willow Brook. And you can see, um, I wish I had, had my laser pointer, but there's uh, some of these contours are going uh, beyond the right-of-way limit. The ends of the pipe are actually beyond the, the contour limit. Thank you, Maureen. There's a right of way. That, that symbol right there is our right of way line. And then uh, this area here is where the wetland fill is. So some of that fill slope is going to extend past that, that uh, area. So technically, we need to have uh, grading rights to do that. Um, and then again, we want to make, be able to come in and maintain these two outfalls as well as the outlets of the, uh, of the Willowbrook uh, culverts. So we'll be looking for a permanent easement from both the woodlands who do the Cape Memory Care and the Whitakers uh, for that work. And then um, across the street, we're going to still talk to some of the abutters here. Um, the way this guardrail is shown, we could, we could probably keep it its length as long as we can flatten this slope out. And then we've talked to Jackie Bird about that. Um, there's a lot of uh, bamboo and kind of um, plants in here that we could clean out and then she was wanted us to make sure that you know it, we allowed it to grow back the way it was, which it certainly will, and we would actually plant some plantings on that slope. So this this slope will actually probably get a little bit flatter through here. We have a guardrail that's shown here. Right now we have a it's a timber guardrail with a steel backing. Um, we need to make sure that the DOT is uh, going to be okay with that. Um, they prefer metal, but we think in this uh, speed of road we can justify using that. We just got to get them to bless it. One of the things that's going to happen after phase two and phase three are done, uh, PACS and the DOT and the town have entered into an agreement to surface pave the entire length of Scott Dyer. So that would hopefully be done as well in 2020. Um, but in order to do so, it, we need to make sure the DOT is um, in agreement with the, the design that we have here. And then again, we would be looking for easements to just maintain the inlet here. So we have, we'll have some temporary grading easements just so we can build the road. But after that, after construction is done, the slopes are stabilized, those would go away. And then we would have permanent easements to maintain the outfalls and the, the culvert ends. Any other questions? Go ahead, John. This is actually more of a question for Maureen. Maureen, we looked at this at a workshop a couple weeks ago and there were some members of the public there um, and it seemed like they had questions, but we also asked questions. Uh, did you receive any notification from the public with any questions regarding this project? No. Okay, and for completeness or not that we're getting into approval, but just so I don't have to ask this question in five minutes, uh, nothing about the um, approval. Oh. I'm, I believe I got a phone call or two. Um, can't, I can't call the name, up, but I think there was someone who called and we, we explained what was proposed. They were, oh, generally pleased with it. Okay. So, yeah. if I could just add, one of the, the folks who wanted to speak up, uh, Matt Sturgis and I spoke with them after the meeting, and then I was out um, looking at the roadway, and I got an opportunity as a uh, Jim Casey who lives off Village Lane. I talked to him for quite a bit and just explained to him what the, the process was, and I believe he's. He's content with what's going to happen. A lot of people are very happy to see the sidewalk go in. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else? Um, I guess 
how do you set how long that temporary easement is going to be, and does that need to be put on a plan? Like how long that is there a um, relative like date that you put? Or usually, we'll, we'll uh, have an exhibit like a plan, and we'll you know we'll talk to the folks and. It's just a right for our workers to, to get onto the to, to the land, and we're obviously responsible to stabilize it and make sure it's it's revegetated and stable when we leave. And then once the construction's done, it just that slope goes back to the, the landowners. Right. So perhaps I mean the the one thing I would um, sorry the one thing I would just worry is uh you know if there was a big rainfall event and it. You turned it back over and it wasn't stabilized, and then it was left to the landowner's property that it was to then fix it. So I don't know. No, I, if, I'm, I'm sure Bob would get a call. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know if that if that had ever been and an issue, or if, or if you usually go through two growing cycles or something to ensure that it's fully stabilized. Yeah. Or depending on when we we do this, um, our contracts will have an erosion control plan, which will mm -hmm. include loaming and seeding of slide slopes. They'll be responsible for stabilizing that before we can accept it. Um, lots of times, if we have a good growing season, we'll still carry some money into the spring. We did it on Hill Way. Uh, and the contractors come back and they, they touch it up if they need to. Uh, on these uh, steeper slopes, if it's anything greater than three to one, we'll have a uh, erosion control blanket that will go over it. Um, and obviously, you know, we work through the construction to make sure that we're not dumping concentrated flow over those uh, those banks when they're not stable. So it's pretty much an accepted practice that they have to be stable when they're done. And then I, I expect like the slopes on the any place where there's vegetation like bamboo or, or some of those plants that grow really fast, they tend to come back really quickly and stabilize those slopes as well. Thanks. Anyone else? Uh, I have a question. Go ahead. In the workshop, was there any discussion of the waivers? Yes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Go ahead, John. I have a motion for Go right ahead. consideration. Motion for completeness, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted in the facts presented, the application of the Town of Cape Elizabeth for a resource protection permit to fill up to 1,200 square feet of wetland as part of the reconstruction of Scott Dyer Road be deemed complete. This planning board determination includes granting of the following waivers. Number one, a high intensity soil survey with the waiver supported by the submission of a wetlands report based on field determinations by Gary Fullerton, Maine certified soil scientist. Number two, pre and post stormwater calculations with the waivers supported by the submission of a stormwater management plan, including written materials and plans prepared by Steve Harding. Okay. okay, we have the motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. All right. So, next item on the agenda is public hearing on the project itself. Um, and again, seeing no one, I will close the public hearing and turn it over to the board for. Questions, comments on uh, the substance of the project? Go ahead. Um, can you just, did you at the workshop discuss the trees to be removed? I don't want to go over stuff. Go ahead, ask it. Can you, I noticed there's some good sized trees being removed, the 36 inch oak um, among them. Is Are there plans to replant? I didn't see that on the drawings. Um, there's there's no trees in, near the wetland areas that we'll be taking out. Um, all of those are smaller, scrubby type growth. Um, there are some uh, substantial trees. There's one here at the uh, near the paved dri uh, driveway to Cape Memory Care. Um, there's an oak tree there. Um, sorry, right over here. Um, I did talk to John Barrett about that. Um, they actually have some sight distance issues looking around it. You can see we show an esplanade right there and then essentially this would be the new curb line. If you go out and look at it, it's it's very close to the roadway. It's, it's pretty much a hazard. So that particular tree, um, and we've looked at all these trees um, as you go to the west, I think that's right. There's a couple of trees up here. This one again is in a, this is an oak tree. 
Uh, we talked to the Whitakers about that. It's very close to the, the roadway, and that's the edge of the sidewalk and the slope. Um, so saving that would uh, would be difficult to do. There's an apple tree here that uh, that they would actually like to see go. Some of these dark these dark lines are proposed contours, and if you go out and look at it, I set a few stakes for them, and they actually want us to make this slope a little bit steeper to to tighten that up and bring it a few feet closer to the roadway, which we, we can do with a two and a half to one slope. Bob's talked to them about uh, replacing that oak tree if they'd like with something that they want to select. So that's something that the town would be doing. Uh, there's a kind of a tree right here. I'm sorry, wrong one. There's another tree here. I'm sorry, we don't, we haven't shown it with an X, but looking at it, it's uh, it's in, it's one of those trees where the utility lines come right through it, and it's been cut out in the middle, and it's a fairly large tree. But one of the things we're going to have to do is move the utility poles back a few feet in through here. Some places five feet, some places three or four. Um, but anyway, that tree would go, and that's primarily we believe just because the. The utility companies are going to need that removed. Um, hopefully, this other drawing comes up. Sorry. Um, there's a couple of trees. This is the village lane area. There's a couple. Of, there's a tree here. A couple of trees here that are close to the road. Um, again, we talked to the Whitakers about one of these trees over here and. They weren't, uh, they don't like the tree. It's not a very attractive tree, so that one would go away. Uh, there may be a couple of other isolated trees along the utility corridor that may have to be moved back or, or removed. Um, and then I, I believe that's it. Well, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. And uh, one of the things we definitely want to point out there's a to the uh, west of Willowbrook. There's two large catalpa trees here. The Whitakers have actually planted those. Um, and th they're really nice trees that have big, broad leaves, and they're f very fragrant. Um, so we're going to make sure that we protect those uh, in that area as well. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Awful quiet tonight. <laughs> I may come and I'm excited about the extra road width for bikers. I'm excited about a better road for drivers. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Victoria. Uh, motion for approval. Go right ahead. Okay. Uh, finding of facts. Number one, the town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting a resource protection permit to fill up to 1,200 square feet of wetland as part of the reconstruction of Scott Dyer Road, which requires a resource protection permit. Number two, the proposed fill will not materially obstruct the flow or of surface or subsurface waters across or from the alterations area. Number three, the proposed fill will not impound surface waters or reduce the abs absorptive capacity of the alterations area so as to cause or increase the flooding of adjacent properties. Number four, the proposed fill will not increase the flow of surface waters across or the discharge of surface waters from the alteration area so as to threaten injury to the alteration area or to upstream and or downstream land by flooding, draining, erosion, sedimentation, sedimentation, sedimentation <laughs> <laughs> easy for otherwise. you to say. <laughs> Number five, the proposed fill will not result in significant damage to spawning grounds or habitat for aquatic life, birds, or other wildlife. Number six, the proposed fill will not pose problems related to the support of structures. Number seven, the proposed fill will not be detrimental to aquifer recharge or the quantity or quality of groundwater. Number eight, the proposed fill will not disturb coastal dunes or contiguous back dune areas. Number nine, the proposed fill will not maintain, will maintain or improve, yeah, let's say proposed fill will maintain or improve ecolo ecological and aesthetic <coughs> values. And number 10, the wetland fill is minimized so that the maximum amount of existing buffer area between the wetland and adjacent land uses is not disturbed. 
Number 11, the fill and road reconstruction project will be accomplished in conformance with the erosion prevention provisions of Environmental Quality Handbook Erosion and Sediment Control published by the Maine Soil and Water Conservation Commission dated March 1986 or sub subsequent revisions thereof. Number 12, the fill and road reconstruction project will be accomplished without discharging wastewater into wastewater treatment facilities in violation of section 15-1-4 of the sewage ordinance. And number 13, a portion of the proposed fill will be placed in the floodplain and will require a flood hazard development permit from the code enforcement officer in accordance with section 6-6-6 of the floodplain management ordinance. Number 14, the application substantially complies with section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth for a resource protection permit to fill up to 1,200 square feet of wetland as part of the reconstruction of Scott Dyer Road be approved subject to the following conditions. Number one, that the plans be revised to satisfy the comments of the acting town engineer in his letter dated December 12th, 2018. Number two, that the applicant observe easements, obtain easements for work outside the right of way. Number three, that the applicant obtain necessary permits from the Maine Department of Environmental Protection. U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and Town of Cape Elizabeth Code Enforcement Officer. Number four, that there be no alteration of the wetland until the above conditions are satisfied. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. John? Right. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. All right. Thank you. Was that your final motion? Final. That was it, very appropriate then. Yes. <laughs> and now, now we're done. Items not on the agenda, so the big item not on the agenda is this is Victoria's last meeting with us. And we're gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss all of you. But I'm sure you'll be having lots of fun with the city of Portland, so. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. She's got I'm city of Portland. Swag. You got your swag. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your years of service on this. Uh, we've, I've learned a lot working with you, and I thank you. Go ahead, John. I just want to say thank you, too. Uh, your attention to detail is something that's definitely going to be missed, <laughs> especially by me. Uh, We've all got to reach for. <laughs> yeah. But it's been a pleasure to actually sit right next to you, and uh, good luck with everything going forward, and hopefully you won't be a stranger. I uh, won't. Well, good luck with that little thing you're doing. Yeah, today. thanks. You yep. <laughs> Go ahead. And I, I also want to say goodbye. I, I do want to say that you, your attention to detail is legendary. <laughs> and you have really pushed me to be a better planner, and I want to thank you. And I thank you for all that great mentoring that you've given me. <laughs> so, miss you all. Uh, thanks. All right. Do we have any other motions for the board? We need to elect a... No, 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 next, next month. month. Next month. Okay, it's based on who was not at the last. Yeah, there, meeting. there, yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, whoever, wasn't whoever wasn't at the last meeting, that's who's got the jobs. <laughs> so if there's no motion to adjourn, Victoria can't leave. Right? <laughs> <laughs> or she can make that final ah, motion. Nobody second. Go nobody second. It, nobody <laughs> second. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Do I have a second? second? All right, Jim. All right, all those in favor. Thank you, guys. Yay.